Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, General Johnson, uh, General Williams, thanks for the opportunity to, to be here and to help kick off what I know will be a really productive couple days with a lot of opportunity to do just what General Johnson talked about is reflect on uh, leadership, character, all very important. Uh, it's really a distinct honor for me to be here. And, you know, as the class of 2016, you know, has their last opportunity in this type of venue, again, a real privilege and honor. It's always uh, great to be out amongst our airmen and to be able to talk with our force. I thought there was going to be some chance when I said that 2016 thing. I got nothing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's early, right? It's snowy. It's cold. We've got to get warmed up here. Is that what it is? It's 15 to last year. See, that's why you need a good officer behind you to straighten you out when you get it wrong right off the get-go, right? Excellent. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, before I get started in talking about leadership in the profession of arms and giving you my perspective on it that spans 30 years of doing our business, I want to kind of set the stage with a, with a video that will kind of help uh, do that. So, so certainly uh, a great representation of the effect of air power. But what I really want you to think about as I talk this morning and as you kind of listen to all the other speakers over the next uh, today and tomorrow is uh, that's an effect. But that effect doesn't happen if you really paid attention to that video, and I think some people did. You know, that takes airmen. And airmen need to lead and be led. Otherwise, you don't create the effects of air power. You just have pretty cool stuff that could do pretty cool things. So it's, let me give you a couple more examples of what I'm talking about when you think about airmen and air power and leadership. 
So this is Chief Master Sergeant Richard Etchberger. He's one of our Medal of Honor recipients, 1968, uh, in a classified radar site in Laos. He and 19 of his fellow airmen are there. They're under attack by uh, the North Vietnamese, uh, insurmountable odds against them. Airmen being wounded, they're calling in to be evacuated. Uh, Chief Etchberger uh, tends to those wounded, continues to fight off the enemy for several hours until helicopter support can come in and evacuate them. And as a true leader, he makes sure every one of his teammates is up into that helicopter and is the last one to be hoisted off that hillside. And once all of our airmen are in that helicopter and they're going, uh, one of the enemy just happens to have that lucky shot. It goes through the fuselage of that helicopter and he loses his life. Uh, all in doing what it is we have all stepped up to do as airmen in our Air Force, and that is, you know, pay the ultimate sacrifice as called upon to by our nation. So a great story. I had the very distinct honor of just last week being out at Minot Air Force Base and dedicating one of the dorms standing behind his son, Corey, who never really got to know his dad. Uh, you know, 2010, his, um, he was awarded the... Um, Medal of Honor, and only then, as a grown man, did Corey ever really get to hear the full story about his dad's service and sacrifice. Uh, for many years, that was classified. So these are the kind of leaders that go before you. These are the leaders whose shoulders you will stand on. Another great example here, I'd like to introduce you to CMAS son, Joe Carrillo. She happens to be a reservist out at March Air Force Base. I had the honor of meeting her a year ago. She was actually deployed to Saudi Arabia just about 20 years ago. Uh, she's out there as a young senior airman, actually out doing PT with her fellow airmen, running beside the Cobart Towers. All of a sudden she saw a lot of you know, uh, activity, uh, security vehicles you know, running by, going towards the compound. She stops, takes a look, and in that very moment, uh, the explosions take place, knocks her and her teammate uh, basically out on the ground. They're out for a couple minutes. They both get up and regenerate. And she's a med tech back then, and, and Joe steps up, and instead of trying to get her wits about her, trying to run for cover, or figure out what happened, she runs to the fire. And, you know, that day we lost 19 uh, great patriots, but we would have lost more if it had not been for Joe. Joe stepped up to it, ran into the fire. And she continues today to dedicate herself uh, to making sure our airmen and family are connected, uh, especially when they're deployed, because what she realized as that experience as a very young airman, that while you serve in your own right, you put the uniform on every day, there's a level of uncertainty and service and sacrifice that our families endure. And sometimes it's greater than our own. And you know, she realized when there was so much churn going on during that event that so many families back home did not know whether their loved ones had perished or not. We were having difficulty reporting stuff. The connections back then were not nearly what they are today. So she dedicates herself to connecting with families as our airmen go to faraway places and do what our nation needs them to do to keep them connected, either through the yellow ribbon programs and the various things that we have, but no doubt a leader in our Air Force. Let me uh, bring up this next uh, really great example of a couple of great airmen, uh, airmen that you will lead. Uh, so here you have Tech Sergeant uh, DeChan. You see him wearing staff sergeants right there next to him. He's standing next to his supervisor, Master Sergeant Eric Nelson. Uh, this is when they were both stationed at Turkey, and um, Kit was an ALS instructor, and uh, Eric was the commandant there. But their story goes back and transcends this earlier. So... Um, Sergeant Jatan there, then Airman Jatan, will tell you back in his days when he first came in the Air Force, he's had his first duty assignment at Nellis Air Force Base. He is a self-professed, he knows I use these terms because he's given me position, but he would call himself a dirtbag airman. Didn't really care much about being in our Air Force. This was just something he was doing until he was going to do something else. Didn't take very much pride in what his mission was as a maintainer. Uh, didn't show any pride in his appearance and what he did. And one day... He got selected to go to Airman Leadership School, and back then, uh, Sergeant Nelson was the commandant of the Airman Leadership School there at uh, Nellis. And he sat down and he had this conversation with um, Airman DeChan then and said, hey, you know, what do you want to do in life? Really got to know uh, Airman DeChan in a personal level. They developed a relationship. He showed the Airman DeChan that he respected him, that he was better than what he was showing everybody else, and tried to encourage him to step up to something bigger than himself. And now, you know, Sergeant DeChan, uh, I get to meet also uh, Sergeant Nelson really just a few months ago before he retired out of Altus. And, you know, this is a leader, a senior NCO, 
that took the opportunity when so many before him could have taken an opportunity to motivate and inspire a young airman to live up to their full potential. And now we have Sergeant DeChan, he absolutely uh, continues to serve. He's the NCOIC of our first term airman center at Cannon, continues to develop and inspire and motivate the young men and women that will continue to serve after him. And I bring them up as examples because um, these are the men and women that you're gonna lead. So while you, by definition, when you graduate this prestigious institution, our United States Air Force Academy, you are going to be leaders among leaders. Uh, they are gonna be very experienced leaders. They are going to know, in some cases, a lot more about our Air Force and their technical jobs than you know. And that will initially may appear or seem to be a little bit intimidating to you. But make no doubt about it, the nearly 400,000 enlisted men and women will look at you as their leader and expect you to lead them. And if you remember anything, at least anything that I have to say uh, today, and when we go through the Q&A later, um, I want you to remember one thing about leadership that is really fundamental. Leadership is not about you. It is not about you. A lot of things that have been happening to you thus far in your life, a lot of things that have happened to you at your time here at the Academy have felt about you. You've accomplished things in your lives that you had to work really hard and it was something you did. I think you're learning more as you're here about being part of a team, being part of something bigger than yourself. But then, nonetheless, you have goals, aspirations, you work hard, uh, you look to achieve things personally, but you know, obviously tethered to the institution. But when you get out there and lead these airmen, that day you become a lieutenant in our United States Air Force, this has nothing to do with you. It's got everything to do with those men and women, those men and women that you saw in that video that you are going to lead to produce those effects for your nation in this profession of arms. You have to understand that. You have to understand that this isn't about your accomplishments. It's about the accomplishments of your team. It is about how you empower them, elevate them, motivate, inspire, ignite passion in each and every one of those young men and women, and then let them go. It's about you taking responsibility for their failures. It's about you elevating them up in front of everybody else and saying these are the folks that got it done. Being the first to recognize them. That's what leaders do. That's what leaders in the profession of arms do. It's, an, it's a tremendous, tremendous amount of responsibility we will place you on your shoulders. You need to rely on these men and women. Realize that they need to be led, want to be led. And if it's about you, I promise you at some given point, you're going to turn around and you're not going to be leading anybody. You're going to be standing by yourself. But if you care about these people, if you get to know these people and understand that your team will always be better than you and your job is to consistently make them better, we will recognize your leadership in that fashion and you will continue to progress. The future is going to be uncertain. No question about it and you are gonna lead our Air Force into the future in very challenging times with tremendous uncertainty. But remember this, you lead in the profession of arms, not in a normal organization. And there is a different level of commitment that your nation, that your Air Force expects of you. You walk by those words, those core values every day, and they are more than just words. They hold us together. They are a bond. That call to duty, that commitment, each and every one of you have to have it. It's the very fabric of who we are. If you can't lead and live up to those, you can't lead in the profession of arms. You can't motivate and inspire these young men and women that absolutely will look to you to ensure that they and their families are cared for and are part of the equation. And if you do that, there is no mission that they will not take on under your leadership. There is no great sacrifice that they will not step up to. They will continue to do what those that came before us do, and that is live up to this sacrifice that no other profession, no other profession in the world expects of men and women. There is no greater commitment than that made by those that are in our profession. We are entrusted with our nation's security the protection of our citizens and the preservation of our way of life. That is each and every one of you as a leader have to carry that forward. 
integrity, service before self, excellence in all we do, they cannot be just words. They cannot. They have to be who you are. They must be who you are, and they must be who the airmen you lead are. If they are not, we are destined to fail. Treating each other with respect and dignity is at the very foundation of all of it. Not one of these enlisted men and women are inferior to any person sitting in this room. You are not superior beings over them. You are fellow Americans willing to make the same commitment and sacrifice to your country. And you must treat them as such. They know who the leaders are. They know who they'll follow. You give the order, they will be there to do it. But you have to understand that without them, you are nothing. Without you and them together, our Air Force has no capability. We will not be able to produce those effects that that video showed. You know, we have some great airmen, you know, that are here today, you know, guardians of America's future. We have uh, a few of our 12 outstanding airmen of the year. I'm going to ask them to stand up. We have eight of the current and one of our former. Are they, they in here with us? Go ahead and stand up for me. So right back here, I want you to turn and take a look at them. These airmen, these enlisted airmen, are the people that we're putting in your hands to lead. And they are leaders in their own right. You need to leverage them. You need to acknowledge them. They are ready for you to come into our Air Force and take them into the future. They understand about service and sacrifice. They truly do. They understand about taking an oath to defend our nation and they're fully prepared to do it, just as each and every one of you in this room take an oath. Let's play the video about our oath and give you a kind of a perspective on that. We stood in lines and raised our right hands, and then all of a sudden, we weren't kids anymore. It's not that we grew up. We just knew we had to be different now. When they say, repeat after me, and you state your name, it sounds like a mess. A bunch of voices saying their names at the same time, all proud of who they are. By the end of the oath, you're one voice, all proud of what you share. The oath is our bond that brings all airmen together. We solemnly swore that we would support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Maybe a lot of us had never even read the Constitution, but that piece of paper we swore to defend spelled out everything America was capable of. The greatness that was yet to come. Freedoms, rights, powers, duties, responsibilities. That's what we were defending. And now, you've taken that oath. You swore to do what was required of you. What is required will be more than you thought you had. You will be given boundaries and borders, but you will also be shown horizons. Your duty is to achieve the impossible. Your orders are to conquer fears. Do things we couldn't dream of. Your orders are not to live up to some romantic idea of what we were, or to drag our memory with you like a weight. Your orders are to let us carry you to places we couldn't find. Your duty is to your country. Your duty is to be an airman. The oath is not a limitation. It's a starting gun. You have not sworn to do what so many brave men and women have done before. You've sworn to do what no one has done before. Do not repeat after us. Do better. Aim high, airman. That's what you are going to take on, this awesome responsibility as leaders in our Air Force. I, I would tell you, I cannot wait to the day and the honor that I will have to salute each and every one of you as officers in our Air Force. But yet you not forget that it is a privilege, not a right, but a privilege to lead, to lead the world's greatest men and women and the world's greatest Air Force and the world's greatest nation. It is something that I think you will take on in a way that seems overwhelming at first, but understanding you're part of this institution that is bigger than any one person. 
that you are part of something that is a higher calling and stand proud and ready to hold yourselves and others to higher standards. It is just that essential. You know, the, the responsibilities will be great, but you'll be prepared. That is what your experience here at the United States Air Force Academy has prepared you for. There is no question, and this airman's eyes or the eyes of the most senior people in our military, that you will be fully prepared to take on this challenge. So I would leave you with this. As you kind of think about what's going to happen this week and you take all the tidbits of uh, information on leadership and they're vast and wide and I think you should listen to all of them. When you kind of wrap that all up and you take those moments of reflection like General Johnson talked about and you really should take time to reflect on all that you've heard and what does that mean to you and how do you feel about it. Think about what our sixth president had to say about leadership. And at the end of the day, if you can say this is the type of leader you are, if your actions truly inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you're a leader. And you'll be leading like those that came before you. So a real pleasure to be here with you again to kick this off with General Johnson. Again, I look forward to the breakout sessions where we'll be able to get into some really good dialogue and maybe give you some additional perspective on areas that are of interest to you. Uh, but I, certainly on behalf of Secretary James, General, and Mrs. Wells, and Athena, myself, I, I thank each and every one of you for your commitment to come to this institution, our United States Air Force Academy, to put your lives into a different place that so many do not do, to step up to these core values, to dedicate your lives, or at least the time by which you decide to serve, to living by these core values, and do what so few in our nation ever do, less than 1%, and that is serve your nation. God bless. Thank you.